Um, being fed up with bureaucracy and out of control taxes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like seeing tax increases that are, like we're going to have tax increases. Like everybody knows that because things cost more money each year. Like that's it's inevitable. Like it's that old saying, you know, what the, the two certain things like in <laughs> yeah, death, death, death and taxes. taxes. So what's not sustainable is five to 10% tax increases every single year. Which is about where we were throughout the first 15 years of right. the 2000s. Exactly. So seeing that and just knowing that it can be done less expensively, it can be done more efficiently, and that we needed boards that had the ability to just say no yeah. to not, not just in issues, but like sometimes the way things are being done. And it really does have an effect. And, yeah. and since... Uh, you've been a trustee and since I've been a trustee, I'm, we've shaved millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars off the budgets. And while people aren't going to see a lowering of a tax bill because of that, what they'll see at the village level is a flatter trajectory. Yeah. And so I think we're, we're online. The, the first year we were trustees, it was a 5% increase. The second year it was a 3% increase, and this year it's lining up to be a 3% increase. Well, if we, it's, it's, uh, you need to you know, draw a line in the sand and say, I'm going to have the discipline, and I'm going to have the ability to sacrifice a little bit to yeah. to do something about it. Right. And, it's, um, and it, it's prioritization, right? It, it's We have to look at what works, invest in that. And when it doesn't work, don't invest in that. Yeah. Like it's it, the, the perfect analogy is like people invest money in their 401k or, or whatever, right? And they're going to have an annual review year after year after year. If their financial advisor says, no, I want you to stay in this fund, but it's losing 10% a year. No reasonable person is going to stay in that, right? They're going to get, no, I keep losing my ass at this. I don't, it's not a good investment. It's not yeah. an investment. But if you have a fund that's getting, you know, 30% uh, more than expected, year after year after year, you're gonna to wanna to invest in that. Like you want more of that, you yeah. want less of what's not working. And so having the, the discipline to be able to say, this just isn't working. Yeah. And saying, I, we still share the value, mm -hmm. it's just the technique isn't working. Yeah. So, so let's reassess, right? You yeah. Know, and, yeah. So back in 2016, yeah. back in the day, uh, you know, I just felt that this was such a common sense perspective that, you know, who wouldn't agree that something needs to be done about what we're talking about? Right. And I just felt it was such a slam dunk, no brainer. Yeah. And the answer to my question is yes for me. Uh, but it has been surprising the degree of um, resistance to this type of approach, um, you know, to... You know, just how much you know, there's an inertia of government spending that, you know, to stop that, to stop that mentality of, um, you know, advocacy groups that really are going to resist at every turn when you say, like, no, you know, we have to, you know, even though, as you said, like, if, if the village, so, you know, after four years, hopefully we, um, you know, our annual budget increases will average out at about 3%. You know, uh, I've heard it said that, well, the village is only 15% of a total tax bill. So if you're 3% versus 5%, going back to this percent things, you know, it's really pennies for the average taxpayer. But I just, I reject that, that notion just because somebody has to take this seriously. Somebody has to do something about it and have the, in my mind, maturity, discipline, to actually right. say, you know, I am going to make sacrifices. And it's it's been, I think it's very hard for elected officials to not only have the resolve to put that into practice, but to take the arrows that are gonna come with trying to have a sense of discipline and saying, the buck stops here. We have, right. to, we have to do something. And we can't just be on an island and be unconstrained in our spending just because we're 15%. Well, it goes, to, there's two things that come to mind. One, like when you were a kid and you wanted to do something and you told your mom, well, Bobby's doing it. And how many times yeah. did your mom say, well, Bobby jumped in the lake, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. would you, you know, would you follow? Right. And 
So that's, so I agree. We should never do something or not do something because other taxing entities are doing it. It's like voting against something doesn't mean that you're against its success. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Two points that kind of came to mind and when we were just talking is that I, I liken it to a group of people, be it a family or a group of friends in a car who are raving hungry and they need to go to a restaurant. You share the concern for your hunger. Right. You share the outcome of being fed, and you wildly disagree on how to get be go get right. from hungry to fed. Right. Everybody want values getting fed, but you just have different ideas. You know, right. one person might want pizza, sushi, uh, Thai, whatever it might be, but it doesn't. You know, you share the concern for the cause. And the out you share a, a desire for a similar outcome. It's just those pathways are going to be different, you know, on whatever right. issue. Right. But to not have access to a viewpoint because it doesn't exist at, at the board level uh, is dangerous. Yeah, I always say that. Uh, you know, given take an issue and any issue, uh, it could be, uh, you know, the, the best type of desk. Uh, you could be an extreme one way and an extreme other way. You know, right. one person might say a metal desk is the best, and the other says a wood desk is the best, or whatever it might be. A metal is definitely <laughs> the best. <laughs> and there's truth in both perspectives, and in, in people who see the issue, you know, uh, you know, from anywhere in that spectrum, there's truth all along the spectrum, and. In order to get the best decision that satisfies the most, you really have to consider whether a wood desk, the merits of a wood desk versus a metal desk or whatever, whatever the issue might be. And if you are all the way at one end, if you are a wood desk person and you can't be cons convinced otherwise, you probably don't have the right solution. You're probably missing something if, if you were the most extreme. And it's something that I, I think about a lot. Um, it was close, but there's a lot of shades of gray. And a lot of times, um, I think it can be easy to, when you're on the losing end of a vote, you know, be like, oh, those idiots really blew this one. Or right. Really, yeah, I don't, I don't but it, 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 right. And it, it's kind of a manipulative thing that could be done. It can be. Uh, and, and people do it. You know, yeah. but I think what's important to be said is that like, I don't agree with all of my colleagues on everything. Obviously, there's votes, right? But I respect my colleagues. I, I do. And that respect is shown by the fact that I'm willing to engage in debate. Like, the, like if you ever want to know, like, if I don't respect you, I'm just not going to interact. <laughs> if you're going to say something, I'm not even going to debate you. Yeah. Right? So it's like, in my culture, that engagement and that willingness to debate with you means that I respect your point of view and I want to challenge it and I want you to challenge me back, uh, right? Like that, that's in my culture, that's a sign of respect. Yeah. <laughs> in other cultures, I know it's a sign of like hostility and you know, whatever, but I, I do like, I, I, I respect everybody who gets elected because it ain't easy. Yeah. It reminds me of another thing too. I think in politics, like I think people get in and they want to get reelected. And I think that getting reelected means making a lot of people happy. Absolutely. Well, you don't make people happy by saying no. No. You right? say yes like, to My kids have never been happy when I said no. No. Yeah. Considerate. So, so I think that government has a natural tendency to just grow. Absolutely. Right. Because government only gets bigger. It doesn't get smaller. Right. It gets bigger and bigger until it has to get smaller. Yeah. I would rather keep it small so that it never has to, you know, like you never get into an emergency yeah. situation where you have to fire 20% of the people or lay people off. So, um, but again, I, I think that making people happy is very expensive at times. Absolutely. Because it's, it's, and, and then the, you know, and then there's not enough people who want to cut the budgets to make enough of those people happy, right? Yeah, because, you know, like right. I said, going back to, you know, you know, it might only be 1% of the people that are demanding, just demanding that right. uh, the taxing entity, whichever yeah. one, we have six taxing entities with over 40 elected officials, you know, 1% of the population might demand that something be funded. Right. And, and it, the easiest thing, if you're sitting at, as one of those elected officials, is to satisfy that 1%, where the 99%, they're not going to find out about it pretty much ever because they're busy they living their lives. And Let's face it. You know, we, we, it's just, or, or even if they're in the lack of evidence, show me a convincing model. Yeah. Like, show me the cause and effect and mm -hmm. the math behind it. Like, I'm, you know, I frequently ask you, like, well, what's the math behind this claim? 
You know, yeah. if an organization makes a claim that this or this or this oh, is going to okay. happen. This pays for itself. Yeah. This pays Five for times it. over. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's sure. every, everything pays for itself, right? right. But our tax bills are still pretty darn high. Yeah. So. Just, but it, it's, it's hard sometimes because, you know, like sometimes my ideas are just pure shit and they need to be, you know, they need to be challenged so that I can realize they're bad ideas like the, the street naming. And then there's people who debate with me and they have bad ideas. And when you challenge it and you get down into those weeds, you, you start to see like, okay, well maybe this isn't such a great idea. And yeah. usually evidence by the fact that they go away and quit arguing on, on that topic. Yeah. And then hopefully you could uh, find common ground, right? Find common <laughs> ground is, is, I think it's the one thing that is sorely missing in the village right now is that and I'm glad that you're doing this because I, I think it's an interesting thing. Like we don't agree on everything. Yeah. But if we were to like list our values, list our goals as villagers, I would wager that, you know, most villagers get them in a room. We're like 80 to 85% congruent on what our core values are. Yeah. And what we, what divides us is just the technique on how to achieve the goal. Yeah. But we all have very similar goals, yeah, and, and you know that's I, a big deal. I said before, we're almost everybody I know. We're in the same boat. We're rowing in the same direction. No need in taking your oar and clubbing someone over the back. Sometimes, sometimes, right, you know, but sometimes that's what it feels like. So. Yeah. Well,